you're uh, you're uh, uh, giving him the you know some uh, information on these things. With regard, of course, to the foreign policy thing, it's uh, this basically is going to continue to be well. Of course, nobody can predict anything, but it's going to continue to be uh, primarily up, upbeat because there's more more to come, as you can imagine. And uh, so uh, that's uh, uh, that's the reason that, uh, it, and that eventually tends to pull an economy. It can pull it down or it can pull it up. Yeah. Uh, and it's uh, the uh, the, uh, the uh, well, idea of that. Uh, as you get into this, uh, I, I would urge you to try to. It's the main thing is to find what question to ask. And, uh, Right. Well, I think we'll uh, really in. make some breakthroughs on that. Uh, you, of course, will look and look at what we have previously here. Yeah. I think they, the council took another poll did they? Yeah. Uh, oh, about a year ago, and they right. some of the domestic things. Just, well, in other words, what do people think? That's what we're really right. talking about. What do they right. think? We're not, and it doesn't mean that because we find out what they think, we're going to do that. No. You can't do that. But you've got. But in order to find, in order to know what your obstacles are, let us suppose you found that that uh, 90 percent of the people are against uh, adequate defense. Well, that doesn't mean that for that reason you don't have adequate defense. But then you know what your problem is to what you have to sell. See, that's a, that's the reason I like to look at these polls because it, uh, the the worst thing that you can do is to have a poll taken and then just go out and say, well, not because the people feel this way. That's what we're going to say. I agree. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a terrible. It's, we're supposed to lead the polls, not follow them. That's right. But I think they, what they can tell you is that uh, what's the size and shape of the people that you're That's right. And, right. and you know what your problem is. You know what you know how to talk to them. Right. Fine. Well, one of these days after after you finished it, perhaps a month or so, I, I, I told Chuck to see if you can't come in. We can have a, ch have a chat about it. Thank you, Mr. President. So, well, I look forward to that. Give my best to your colleagues up there. Your, your, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Danny, uh, I mean, uh, Dan Lufkin, yeah. Lufkin's an old yeah. friend of mine. Well, Dan's a fine fella. Hope he makes a lot of money. Tell him not to let the market go down too far. No, I won't. Okay. Good trip, bud. Bye. 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 Yes, please. Mrs. Nixon, please. Mrs. Nixon? Yeah. Yes, Mr. President. Yeah. Mrs. Nixon, Mr. President. Yeah. Just a second. <clears throat> George Schultz, please. Thank you. Hello. Mr. Schultz. Yeah. Um, you wanted to talk to me before. Uh, well, uh, it's a question of our statements at 11 o'clock about the uh, steel and the rail situation. Yeah. Steel, as you know, is settled. Rail yeah. is. The contract is settled, and they're working on a uh, back-to-work agreement. Mm -hmm. And they don't plan to announce the contract settlement until they have the whole thing wrapped up. But our mm -hmm. guess is that it'll be wrapped up prior to 11 o'clock. Right. Good. Uh, Good. The, uh, Good. And so there would be back-to-work yeah. constructions and so on. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, our, uh, our question is what to say about these contracts. Now, it seems to me off our... Um, all the things that have happened and the discussion that that uh, you and I had um, Saturday, uh, that uh, uh, while we can't welcome these large wage increases, uh, we can stress the fact that a strike has been avoided, that a strike is settled, that uh, that um, uh, there is something about productivity in each of these agreements, and and not denounce them. Yeah. And I think we're well. We've got we we have a commitment not to denounce, much, not yeah. to denounce the steel one at least. Right. I think that's right. 
I just wanted to be sure yeah. that was your guidance. That was yeah, okay. yeah. We can't denounce the steel one, and I. We can. Uh, it's pretty hard. <laughs> it's uh, hard to roll over, but it, the story at least did indicate that it was in the same. It's, uh, uh, it's in the can aluminum, uh, can aluminum thing, and nobody could expect that it could be anything else. Well, after I start meeting with Connolly, I mean, uh, let me. It might be well if I get you done. We could so that he's clued in on it too. All right. He, I won't, he won't make the statement, but he, but he ought to know that what we're what we're doing on it. Okay. Okay, sir. Fine. Stay fine. Fine. For a call. fine. I'll, I'll I'll give you calls. Thank you. Yes, sir. Congressman Curtis of Nebraska, please. Thank I mean, you. Senator Curtis. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I find he's in a finance committee. They could have him return the call within five minutes. Fine, fine. Thank you, sir. Yes, please. Senator Goldwater, please. Thank you. And Senator Curtis is returning your call. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Hi, Carl. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Well, I'm okay. Good, good to see you. I, I hate to take you out of a meeting, but uh, sure. and I don't want to, I never, never want to put any pressure on my good, on a good friend, but I just want you to know one thing on the Lockheed thing. Uh, it isn't one that I would normally, but I have just talking to Reagan uh, and his people over the weekend, and they really feel that after the SST being knocked out and uh, if they lose this one, that this could just just about uh, be critical in terms of our our uh, uh, of, of the situation in '72. You know, we uh, we have in California, as you know, next to the state of Washington, has the highest unemployment, and it's mainly due to airframes and and uh, that sort of thing and defense. Now, some of it is turning around, and they feel good on a lot of things, but. Uh, they're, they're, without getting into the, the the technical, the financial, and the rest, where you're really very expert, I just wanted you to know that the political consequences here are, are really very, very serious. And uh, I wish you would consider that as uh, as you uh, make up your mind. Let me say we're I'm more interested actually in getting Curtis, keeping Curtis in the Senate, than anything like that. But I just, I, but I don't, I don't believe that that's uh, that's that's uh, going to be. Uh, Problem, but I do, I do, I did feel that this California thing is really a very difficult one for us, and uh, Reagan just uh, feels, I mean, he's really uptight about the thing, and I wanted you to know about that. Well, I thank you for calling. You know, this is the first time you've ever had to call me on a boat. I, well, I, would, I, 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 I would, well, I wouldn't. You know, the, uh, as a matter, no, no, sometimes no. our our people, our people don't have you on the list because you're always with us. <laughs> well, and I and I understand. I, I, I want you to feel free to call me yeah, anytime. Yeah, sure, because, uh, sure. I want to help if I can, and I'll see what I can do. I appreciate it, Carl. Okay. Now, one th other thing, let me tell you. Uh, uh, not at this point, but uh, in about uh, a month or so, and this is just between the two of us, I'd like for you to come down and we'll have a little talk about uh, uh, about HR1. All right. I'd like to see what kind of thinking, I mean, I know you've got John over there, because, uh, and, and uh, just uh, because uh, let's, let's handle it, and I, I want to get your thinking on it, because uh, I just don't like to be. Now, uh, this is. I don't want you to pass this on any of the others, but I don't want to be in a position of having to fight our Republicans. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I know you've done a lot of thinking about the darn thing, and uh, so uh, we'll uh, we'll have a chat about that. Okay. And uh, then you can pass it on to the others later. But I think if the two of us talk, then it doesn't leak out. Yeah. All right. All right, Carl. Okay. Bye. Hello? Senator Goldwater, sir. Hello, Mr. President. Hi, Barry. How are you? Hi, thank you. Two things. One on, uh, on the more uh, pleasant side, and uh, uh, not the other's unpleasant.
But I have to leave to come to do the milk producers in Chicago uh, on September 2nd. Well, I'll but I'll be there. And uh, uh, where, you will be at the usual place? Yeah, the Balboa Bay Club. Balboa Bay. Well, we try to get together. I'm not, t I'm not doing any business, so we're not going to talk any business. That's fine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> fine, fine. The, uh, the second thing is this, that... Uh, but uh, I know you were. I I have talked to uh, to Ron Reagan, you know, and about this Lockheed thing, yeah. and uh, I I know how you feel about that. Here's here's basically the political problem. The political problem is that having gets gotten sunk on SST, to lose this one uh, would have a very depressing effect. You see, as you know, Southern California's unemployment, and even in Orange County, is nine percent. Oh my and, uh, and it's a real hell of a problem for us. I know it. Barry's district has Lockheed in it. You yeah, think this is a tough position for me to take? It sure is. With yeah. some of my dearest, closest friends working yeah. in Lockheed. But, right. uh, uh, Dick, I mean, Mr. President, it's just a, it's a, it's a matter of principle that I just... If we can you feel Lockheed, you... We're going to have to do it for everybody. Yeah. Well, they, the, uh, the, the thing is, you know, this bill now is limited to the I know it. To Lockheed. Uh, and, uh, you can't justify that. I have old Ed Ewell up here with Fairchild. He said, you okay that, and by God, I got $30 million when I lost last year. I want some, some money back. Yeah, yeah. And I hear there's over 400 such cases in the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. That's besides the point. Well, let me say that I wouldn't, uh, don't want to arm twist you up. Just, just call them to let you know the, the problem. That isn't the question of the, well, as I said, of our friends or anything, but it's really more... Uh, you know, uh, I know it. Ron is awful close to that political situation, and he's well, so is my son. He's crying all over my shoulder. Oh, well, your son's going to win. Come on. <laughs> anyway, I but, think uh, my hunch is it's could we get could we get uh, is there, is there any way maybe you and uh, you might uh, might drop down and have a chat with me about three o'clock? I mean, or do you feel you have oh, to be there to vote? You're too committed. You're too committed? Yeah. How about Paul Fannin? Could he I do this? No, I haven't heard. I know that he, I think he feels that way because you are. I, think I, don't, I haven't even talked with him about right. it. When I get in these things, I just keep my mouth shut. Uh, that's right. That's right. Now, the main thing that you can reassure them on, uh, and which I'm sure you're aware, after all, uh, the man that went into Cambodia and the Laos and has fought for ABM is not going to get taken in by anybody on the other side. I'm not worried about it. That's what it is. And we're playing for very high stakes, and it involves... Well, I do. As I told Bill Rogers this morning, I think it would help you and help the country if you could explain the whole developing situation over there, as you've done with me, <laughs> to the American people. I know when I talk with them... The developing situation in... The, uh, the Japanese... Right. Uh, ...research and so forth. Right, right. Uh, well, we will at a certain time. I think I'll do that. I, uh, you have to, because... Yeah, I want to... People I run into, when I explain this to them, they say, well, God, we didn't know those things. What they don't understand, basically, is you've got the Japanese on the one side, you've got the Soviet Union on the other side, and the point is we're bringing another player into the game. That's what it really is involved. I have a hunch it's the smartest thing you've ever done. Yeah. Now, on Taiwan, uh, uh, Bill uh, called you. I asked him to, and uh, I think it's the best move to do, Larry, uh, Barry, because we're fighting to keep we're fighting to keep Taiwan in. We can't. I mean, we're going to get rolled uh, on 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 the other one, but uh, uh, but because we're going to lose vote, but we we can keep Taiwan in. Uh, Peking isn't going to like it. They'll, they'll squeal at this, but I we expect that. And, you know, uh, I haven't had one single call from one Chinese friend. Well, they're great people. Yeah, well, I know the Shanghai Shek family yeah. in this country. They well, I'm for them. I'm for the whole bunch. All the way, but I well, I think it's going to work. Well, we're we're doing our best for them, and I I appreciate your support, boy. But anyway, on this, uh, I just want to let you know, and uh, if you if you see Paul, uh, I I don't want to give him any heat on it. Okay. Please. Yeah. Thanks. Schultz, please. Thank you. Hello. Mr. Schultz, sir. Yeah, hello, uh, Mr. President. Yeah. Uh, U.S. Steel just announced a uh, price increase, a uh, fairly sweeping set of price increases uh, that are quickly estimated to be in the vicinity of 8%, but nobody's had a real chance to analyze it. Um, and the question is what to say about it, if anything. And, um, there are two things that uh, 
it seems to me could be set completely within any uh, uh, framework of the negotiations. One is that we were not informed in advance of this action, mm-hmm. uh, so that we don't have any. We try to nail down the fact that we didn't have any deal with them about prices. Mm-hmm. And I've checked, and they hadn't talked with John Connolly, and they hadn't talked with McCracken, mm-hmm. and I know they haven't talked with me about prices. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other is to say that that uh, they have uh, an unfavorable competitive position now, and mm-hmm. this only worsens it and it doesn't seem to be in their long-run interest. That's correct. Um, I've written this out as follows. The administration was not informed in advance of this action, and therefore we do not have any detailed analysis of it. Mm-hmm. However, in view of the already unfavorable competitive position of the domestic steel industry, mm-hmm. we question whether this price increase is in their long-run interest. Mm-hmm. Price increases of this magnitude and at this time are bound to have an adverse effect on market penetration on the tonnage of steel produced in the United States and on jobs in the steel industry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's and that. But once you add that the uh, that uh, it is essential now for the new Productivity Commission or whatever it is to. Watch, could you put in something on that? I don't know whether that would bear the weight of this. All right. Uh, okay. Of, uh, All right. Fine. Of a thing. That is not well to say in the long term without mentioning that. And they say that in the in the long term, both uh, both steel management and labor must uh, work together for purposes. Stay here for a second. Well, must uh, must uh, look to this problem and uh, or price themselves up or something of that sort. I okay. but just just say that and. and I wouldn't be concerned about cracking them too. Anyway, I mean, we don't. We have no. All right. We don't. All right. I'll, I have no. I have no concern about cracking them. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll put a little tougher sentence on the right, end. Fine. We'll, we'll How did it, did Hodgson handle the, the rail thing announcement? And everything? Yes, right. he did. All right. Um, All right. He played it the way we agreed. I think the price thing caught him a little off guard, so we'll try to nail that down. Fine. Good. Good work. Fine. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Please. Senator Aiken, please. Yes, thank you, sir. Hello. Yes. Hi, George. Yeah. I uh, I hate to bother you on a yeah. matter that is not in the field we usually talk about foreign policy, but I've uh, just uh, been getting uh, some reports from California. Yeah. And uh, on our situation there. And uh, we, th- this Lockheed thing, I know, is a very technical thing, and, uh, and conversely, the, the problem we've got, George, is that having, having, you see, Southern California is is this enormous yeah. pro- airframe problem. Yeah. If we lose this one after the SST thing, it, it, it's going to have a terribly depressing effect. I was just talking to Reagan on the phone over the last week, and he was informing me, and I, I just pass it on to you. I'm not trying to arm twist you. I wouldn't do that, but I would appreciate if you'd consider, if you could give us a little help on it, it would have an enormous effect. I, t- I said at the beginning, if you make it across the board, I go for it. Yeah. But uh, if you make it too selective, mm-hmm. uh, there's hardly anyone up our way in the northeast, in New England anyway. That, that would be affected by it. So, well, uh, that well, wants it. Well, I know. There's well, as a matter of fact, we could go for across the board thing at a later time. The House struck it down. Yeah. But, but on the other hand, at this point, we have a very serious problem in terms of... Uh, this specific uh, thing, yeah. and uh, and I, sir, I certainly would support across the board at a later point if we uh, yeah. it's if we can get our friend Proxmire to go along. <laughs> you may have to. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and uh, it's uh, but but I would uh, well I would just I just wanted to let you know of my well, thanks, deep uh, personal interest in it. And thanks for calling. I know you've got yeah. a personal interest. Yeah. And, uh, it's because of the state and, uh, and know. Southern California has really taken a rap there. Yeah. And uh, I'll try to find something on the, I know up in your way in Vermont, New England, yeah, so forth. We've got to do something for that part of the country. I've got five GE plants within yeah. a stone thrower. Have you? <laughs> well, you let me know what, whenever we can do something. Because, yeah. But incidentally, I'm very grateful for your statements on China. They were just great. I was, uh, really, yes, and I've just yeah. endorsed your statement, uh, uh, Bill's statement on... Uh, oh, did he get it over to you? I asked, uh, he yeah. told me he was going to call you this morning. Yeah. Uh, so, don't you think that's don't you think that's the right approach? I do too. I think the only approach. Yeah, we've got to we got to we've got to oppose the expulsion of Taiwan. 
I, I agree. I, I've always felt that Taiwan belonged to the promotions anyway. Uh -huh. But uh, we certainly shouldn't uh, permit them to be expelled if we can help it. Right. As far as Security Council goes, that's a matter for the UN itself to decide. Mm -hmm. Who has that seat, then it goes outside right. and it'll be right. People's Republic if right. they right. come in right. under right. the terms right. which are laid down. Well, yeah. fine. Well, anyway, George, I, uh, a lot of people watch you up there, and I would, as I say, I sure will help, appreciate it if you could help us on this one. Well, uh, I'm not taking any part in the debate. Yeah, yeah, I think I yeah, that's about as yeah, good as I could do, right. considering the attitude up that yeah, way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mrs. Haldeman, can I have Secretary Conley, please? Thank you. Yes, sir. Secretary? Yeah. Uh, the President has called Aiken and Goldwater and Curtis. That's good. Question, uh, did you want him to call Boggs? If he can, I think he'd make the difference with Boggs. Well, okay. Kaylee Boggs. What report did he get on? Any, uh, any favorable on any of them? Not very, no. Curtis Curtis is questionable. It'd probably, probably be all right on that one. Yeah. Uh, Goldwater definitely said no. Yeah. And Aiken made it pretty clear he'd say no. He said he'd stay out of the debate, but he couldn't vote for it because there's nothing in it for New England. Well, he, he misled us up there then. He indicated that if the president would talk to him, he'd probably do it. I just well, got, he may still, I, I just got Roman Aruska. You got Aruska? Yep. Good. So, and I've got Belvin on the other line. So, if you can talk to Boggs, I think he'd be helpful to you. Right. Now, someone the McGregor's office, I guess, suggested he should call Roth. Do you want him to call Roth? I think Roth, no, I think Roth's out. But, uh, okay. Clark McGregor's supposed to be trying to get Roth to not vote on the grounds that he was general counsel for Hercules, and they're the biggest, one of the biggest suppliers for Lockheed. He's got a conflict of interest, but I think Roth's gone. That's my Okay. Opinion. Okay. Very good, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Senator Boggs of Delaware, please. Boggs. Boggs of Delaware, okay. Caleb Boggs. Thank you. Hello. Mr. President, yeah. Senator Boggs is where he can't talk at the moment, and he can call you back in two or three minutes. Fine. Private. Fine. Right. Anytime. Right. Hello. Mr. President, yeah. Senator Boggs. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, Caleb. Yes, sir, Mr. President. Say, I'm sorry to get you out of your meeting. No, that's all and, right. Uh, it's a privilege to talk to. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, and uh, I, uh, I don't want to, uh, don't want to try to arm twist an old friend. Right. But as you know, I'm, uh, I've, I've just been talking to Ron Reagan, and right. uh, he's, he's, uh, he, and of course, he's of course very close to the problem. But he says that after the SST losing, yeah. and he says that if they lose this Lockheed thing, he says it's going to have a psychological impact in Southern California. We've got about nine and a half percent unemployment. That's unbelievable. 
And uh, I just want to let you know, and I, if you can see your way clear to, to, uh, I, to uh, turn your back a little, I would appreciate it. I, you're great. I'm yeah. trying, Mr. President, yeah. on this. I have a peculiar, particular, peculiar situation in Delaware. Uh-huh. My, I, my colleague over in the House side voted against it. Oh. And I, uh, I don't want to be quoted. I think my colleague, a member of the committee here, is going to be against it. Mm. And my news journal papers and. Everything I everything heard, everything you have my, my area there is against it, mm-hmm. and uh, the news journal papers instead of just editorializing one time against it, I've done it four times. Boy, that's right. And uh, I was just talking to my colleague a little while ago. Just to, sure. I told him I went so far as to tell him I said hopeful that he could vote for it, which would make it easier for me. I yeah. said, Bill, if you vote for it, now I could vote for it. Yeah, now, you're yeah. a member of the committee. Well, he's afraid he can't. Yeah, well, and, uh, maybe, we, maybe we'll see what we can he, do there. I'm going to keep open on the thing, yeah, clear up yeah. until I cast my I understand. President. Uh, it's all we can ask. We'll have to get at him. You're okay. great to call. Fine, fine. Right. Right. Thanks. Right. Bye. Right. Right. Yes, please. Secretary Connolly, please. Yes, thank you, sir. Hello. Secretary Connolly's in route to Dr. Kissinger's office. It'll take him five more minutes yeah. to get here. Fine, fine. Call fine. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, Clark McGregor, please. Thank you. This is Haldeman. Oh, thank you. Hello, Bob uh, Clark. Yeah, where are you? I'm in my office. Okay, what is the president now has covered all the calls except Roth, and, and he was just talking to Secretary Connolly. What is the situation on Roth? Uh, Roth has, uh, has indicated opposition, and Boggs has told us that he can't vote for Lockheed if Roth goes against. Clark? Clark, yeah. Why don't you step down to the president's office for a second? Right. We'll do this. Bye. Please. Secretary Connolly, this is Haldeman. Thank you. Well, thank you. Because he'll be here. Down on the second floor, they're giving me a number, Mr. Harper. Okay. They're having difficulty getting the number where he is, Mr. Haldeman. Can they send someone to get him? Uh, well, yeah, and, and if, yeah, that'd ah, be fine. All right. Thank you. Mr. Haldeman, here's yes. Mr. Connell. Yes, sir. Mr. Secretary? Yes, sir. Hi, the President wondered if it would be more convenient for you to meet at 2 or 2.30 this afternoon rather than trying to do it Friday morning. Well, that's fine. Yes, sir. Or if it if, if that's a problem for you, no, Friday, no problem at all. That's would, great for with me. 
Is it? Yeah. Okay. What's what's best time for you? Any time. Two or two would be even better. Two o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But yeah, we'll set up for that. All right. Very good, sir. Yeah. Stay off of the way. Thank you. Got indicating. Yeah, Give me Senator Stennis, please. Thank you. Hello. Senator Stennis. Yes. John? Yes, Mr. President. Well, I, uh, a little bird told me that uh, you had a birthday. Oh, uh, yeah. I just wanted to congratulate you and tell you that, boy, I hope you're around for 100 years. Well, thank you very yeah. much. I uh, hope we go that long uh, down the road together. Believe me, the Senate needs you, the country yeah. needs you. Yeah. Another thing, yeah. too, yeah. Uh, I, uh, I, I had a little meeting with the press today, and they did not ask about the conference reports, but I'm going to have... You have already gotten my message that I yeah. that I approve the conference report that it would not be harmful to the negotiating no. position, and I, uh, if you want, I can uh, I'll have Ziegler say that tomorrow morning to the press too. Would that be at all helpful or not? Well, I, I really think it will. All right, it will. All right, I'll have a also yeah. also if you would like, I'll send a letter down on it. Would that be better? Which would you prefer? Well. I send a letter to you saying that I have examined the conference uh, to you. Maybe I guess you and well, I think that if you could do that, I think it'd be quite helpful. To, I surely do. Should I should I send it to you and a bear one to each, or or is it really a Senate problem? Isn't it primarily? Uh, well, yeah, that's, it, it's Senate yeah. problem. Yeah. All right, that's where you're going to have the trouble. Yeah, that's all right. All right. right. All right. And I certainly hope we can do something with it uh, this. Before the week's out, but if we yeah. miss that, we, yeah. we'll get it. We'll get right. it. We'll get yeah. it back. Right. Well, I'll get you a build up. I'll get you a note down about the uh, conference report. Yeah. Fine. Fine. Well, well anyway. Fine, and I fine. thank you very much. Fine, and, and be quite keep, helpful. Keep having those birthdays. All right. Okay. Thank you too. Right. <laughs> yes, please. Congressman Montgomery, please. Yes. Sonny Montgomery. Yes, sir. Yes, please. Congressman Patman of Texas, please. Thank you. Yes, please. Do you have right, Patman? Mr. President, I had him. I got him right back. Oh, I'm sorry. That somebody That's... was in here. I understand that, sir. Fine. Right away. Mm -hmm. Mr. President? Yeah. Congressman Wright Patman, sir. There you are? Yes. Right. Yes, sir, Mr. President. I just uh, learned from uh, one of my spies here that you were celebrating your birthday, and I wanted to s extend my best wishes. Oh, it's so nice right. of you. <laughs> and uh, for, uh, I know you're one of the hardest working members of that Congress. I mean, John Connolly and I are just having a meeting, and, and so now you take the take off an hour. Well, How about that? I'll be glad to, Mr. President. Yeah. Your suggestion, take off an hour. And One I, hour. And you, it hadn't been for you. You and John, you wouldn't have had any Lockheed Bill. That's right. Well, And you got uh, the bill to for. Well, I, I must say, I, we appreciated that very much, and I I, uh, I just want you to know that we thought about you, and uh, and I hope you have many happy returns. Well, thank you, sir. You've made my day and my year. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Have Kissinger come in. Yes, Mr. President. Yeah, hello. Uh, no, uh, no, I was talking to somebody. Oh, yes, Mr. President. Would you get me uh, Marvin Esch, the congressman from Michigan, E-S-C-H? Marvin Esch. Yes, Mr. President. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Congressman Orville Hansen, please. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, Congressman Marvin Esch is in uh, Nairobi, Kenya. He'll be back at the end of the month. Yeah, give me uh, his uh, secretary, please. Sure he will. Yeah. I have Miss Davis, the Congressman Secretary. Yeah. Hello? Hello. Miss David? Yes. Fine. I just called the Congressman. I tried to uh, reach him a couple days ago, but I understand he's out in Africa. Yes, he is. Isn't that great? Is he on a vacation or a uh, trip? Traveling with the Education and Labor Committee. Oh, good, 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 good. Well, the reason I called him was that Clark McGregor told me he's having a birthday, and I just wanted to tell him that I to wish him well. Oh, yes, sir. A couple of days ago. You just, uh, when you're in touch with him, you can tell him that uh, we just hope he's not not only has many more birthdays, but that he has them all in the Congress of the United States. I certainly will. Okay. Thank you for calling. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh. I'm Congressman Orville Hansen, sir. He's driving en route to Idaho. Won't arrive there until the 10th. Uh, they could locate him tonight. Where no, no. Just get his secretary on the phone. All right, sir. Thank Bye. you. Yeah. Mr. President, yeah. Mrs. Lou Dagney, uh, Congressman Orville Hansen's secretary, is on the line. Right. Yes, Mr. President. Hello, I understand.
again, the congressman's on his way out to Idaho. Yes, he is. That's just great. Well, I, all I called him about, I uh, Clark McGregor was telling me, or Bill Timmons, I think it was, was telling me that he had a birthday, and I couldn't realize a man so young could ever have any birthdays. But oh, you tell him I called and that I wished him the very best. Thank you. All right. All right. And, and we just hope he has a lot of more birthdays and all of them right there in the House of Representatives. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.
I have nothing particular uh, to uh, part except to tell you that
Mr. George Schultz, Mr. President. Hello. Mr. President, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. George, I'll call you right back. I've got to go see some bicyclists here. Okay. Hello. Mr. Schultz. Yeah. George. Yes, sir. On those, uh, those two bills, I talked to Connolly about them and... Uh, I think he makes a very good point in one respect. I mean, it sort of leans the other way on the budget thing, but but the reason that he has for not vetoing is that is that we will not have laid the proper predicate for it. His view is that once we have made the other moves that we're planning, that then you just veto them in a minute, you know, and then throw the ball right back over to the Congress. But here to do it now, he thinks there's some doubts about it. Now, that's his argument for whatever it's worth. I and, have uh, to agree. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 I hate to roll over on those bills, I must say, but I, I, I still want to see tomorrow what what the congressional chances are if we do veto. Okay? Okay. Right. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Well, anything new today? Well, we had Nora Scott uh, quite exercise today. I don't know whether you heard about it. But no, I didn't. No. Well, I called him this morning to uh, just tell him about the ABC report. And uh, he's a crusty old Yankee. He, uh, yeah. He, he's not given to overstatement. He said, <laughs> well, he said, uh, he said, I can't say it. He said, I don't know what the feeling is around the state, but he said, in the two most democratic cities in the state of New Hampshire, he said, I would say it was next country. Uh, so that was the damnedest turnout I ever saw. And uh, people were, were warm and cordial. And, uh, so he filed off the television to ABC, which uh, Good. made very extensive coverage of why services this afternoon, which he accused them of biased and inaccurate reporting. And, uh, Good. Went on to say, I expressed my amazement and indignation to the President Nixon received this warm welcome from Asher of Manchester. And, <laughs> then he told me privately, he said, I, he said, you know, he said, I've known him a long time ago, and he said, tell me really, was it good? What do you think? Yeah. Was it really that good? He said, well, he said, I will tell you, he said, those people really were, were trying 
Yeah. Oh, Marty. Yeah. 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 He didn't used to be, did he? He was with Eisenhower pretty much, wasn't he? What happened to him? His wife? really took him on, did he? Did he get some play? Well, 
would be nice if we had gotten a little more out of it. But uh, yeah. And, yeah. and we we tried. It's a very good. It's a very good statistic, as a matter of fact. It's a very impressive statistic, Mr. President. Seventeen percent in, uh, in increase in retail sales is a hell of a lot. Well, it, uh, it's the first of the year. Yes, it is. And uh, the July figures that have been out each week, but now mm -hmm. will be consolidated into monthly figures, show something. Uh, the same kind of a trend continuing. It, it percentage-wise won't be quite as dramatic because once you yeah. get up at a certain level, it stays there. But right, right. It is an encouraging story. Right, but, uh, right. July things will come out when? Well, let's see. The, the July weekly totals have been out, so we'll we'll get the uh, monthly one. Monthly one about a month from now. So. Right, right. Okay, fine, fine, fine. sir. Thank you. Secretary Connolly, please. Thank you. Hello? Yes, sir. Well, what's the report today? Uh, things are are still not good. They're much quieter than they were um, yesterday. Tell me this, uh, uh, you're going to go on with your plan then, are you? I think so. Good. Uh, back to you. Good. I can always be back in three hours. Well, of course, of course. So I think I will. You go, you go to, uh, late this afternoon then? Yes, sir. This afternoon. Yes, sir. Good. Good. Unless, you, unless you want something else, and I'll be delighted oh, to. Sir, no. The only thing that I uh, wanted you to take a look at was to uh, have the Joint Chiefs. I'm doing that now. Oh, good. It's, a, it's a very important. I want to, before we make the final budget thing, I want to have a talk with you about it. Oh, sir. We're, we're whole, just finishing now. Good, good. It's quite, uh, quite uh, shakes up a bit, doesn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Sure as hell does. Okay, well then let's leave her just like that. We'll, uh, and you go on and uh, I'll, I'll see there's no run of the damn bank later. <laughs> so I'll be here another 10 days. Oh, no, right. I'll, be, I'll be here another week, I mean. All right, sir. Yeah, all right. I'll be in touch with them every, every, oh, of course I know. Several hours. But, you know, as a matter of fact, there's no need to stay because as you say, you're three hours away, and you're you're uh, a second away on the telephone. That's right. Okay. All right, sir. All right. Have Thank a good trip. Thank you, sir. Yes, please. Did you get me Mr. Harmon Killebrew, who's with the Minnesota Twins? I think he's probably in Bloomington, Minnesota. All right, Mr. President. Hello. Mr. Harmon Killebrew is president. Yeah. Hello? Hello. Harmon? Mr. President. How are you? I want to congratulate you. I'm glad that when you went over the top, you didn't make a little thing of it. You mounted 501 also. Well, thank you very much. Well, it was a great thrill. As a matter of fact, I was up in Maine over the weekend, and my David, whom you know, David Eisenhower, who was one of your great fans, and, and I said to him, now, you watch that paper every day, and I want to see when Harmon Killer Group bits his 500th. <laughs> and then last night, I was busy, and I just picked up the morning paper here, and by golly, there it was. Yeah. And you got two. As a matter of fact, what the thing that was that I, that was rather ironic, you'd got an, you'd got one in that uh, Homer contest you had with Willie Mays. That's right. And I said, damn it, they should have counted that one. <laughs> but uh, but this is great, and it's a great day for you. And uh, the other thing I want to say is, and I was telling this to Bowie Kuhn the other day, uh, that uh, not only are you in a select circle of 500, but you've really been a great credit to the game. I mean. The, the, everybody, everybody around the league. They, I mean, you, you, you set a fine example for them and uh, for the young people and the rest. And, and uh, I want you to know that the whole country recognizes that. Well, because you know the kids look up to the uh, to the big stars and uh, the way that you've handled yourself and uh, been a team leader and a team player and has been great. 
Well, I certainly appreciate that, right. especially coming from you. It's right. like it's been a long time since uh, yeah. we were in Senator Walker's house that night. Yeah, you remember when there at Eric Herman Walker's out on on, uh, on the street? Yeah, when you were just starting. Yes. Back in '65, and then of course uh, we've. Uh, uh, you still, incidentally, aren't you still first in terms of there's a there's statistic of uh, number of number of times up when you uh, hit or is it well, what I, do you call it I, uh, uh, number of number of home runs in terms of uh, that, yeah. isn't that what is the number there? I, I David was telling me about some figure that he said where you were the all time uh, uh, winner of that. Well, I think Babe Ruth is, is the all time leader, and uh, yeah, it'd be hard for anybody to get ahead of him. Yeah. Ranking. Second until this year, and I don't know what it is now. Yeah. Uh, I've been well, after all, well, now you're past 13. You're 14, right? That's right. Well, and once you're past 13, you're, you're on the way. How are you feeling? Well, I'm feeling better. I had some uh, problems. Uh, my foot was bothering me for quite a while, and it's, it's coming along a little better. So, uh, Did you get hit in the foot or something? Or? I, uh, uh, there was a bad throw at first base, and uh, I tried to avoid hurting the first baseman and came down on my foot and put Ooh. a tendon under my toe. Oh, boy. Well, you know, that could, that could make the very difference on your swing, don't you think? Well, that has made a difference yeah. on my swing because I haven't been able to push off on my foot. Yeah, but uh, how is it now? Can't much you... better, much better. But not completely well. No, something like that is uh, very difficult to heal, especially when you have to play on it. Why don't they? Why don't you take off a little time? You know, the, the twins are having a little difficult this year, and then you could uh, come back. Well, I did uh, take off a few ball games, and they yeah. rest me here and there. So. Yeah. Well, anyway, we uh, the old Washington fans are all pulling for you, and uh, uh, we followed you through the years. Tricia and Julie used to say, "Harmon Killebrew got another one." In fact, you're the only one we could cheer for when you were here. <laughs> yeah. I remember the days in Washington, and right. I want you to. Know that uh, yeah. I have been uh, fans of yours and pulling for you. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Incidentally, when you're out there, uh, be sure to give my best to uh, to Bob Allison, will you? I certainly I, I was noted that he's now doing commentating. I I don't catch many games, you know. I usually work in late. Yeah. And the other night, uh, about 11 o'clock, I turned on, and here's Allison on uh, on comment, uh, doing commentary. Yes, he's been uh, yeah. doing a pre- and post-game show for us and doing the cover on our television game. Right, right. Well, any of that and any of the old senators, you tell them we were so delighted to see one of our guys make it. Okay. Well, I really appreciate yeah. you taking time out of your busy schedule yeah. to give me a call. And, okay. uh, do you, incidentally, you play any golf? Uh, I play at it. You do? Uh, well, I'll tell you, I can't send you a baseball, but I'm going to send you a, a presidential golf ball. It has the presidential seal and a signature on it, and you can use it for holes in one. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. All right. Bye. Thanks for calling me, President. Yeah. Mr. Holder, Mr. President. Yeah. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, four o'clock is best for him if that's okay. Fine. And you have that uh, Kissinger group at three for a few minutes, I guess. Oh, yeah. Okay. This review group. All right. So, oh, that's to be at three, is it? Apparently, that's what Haig says. Okay. You want them some other time? They're meeting for some period of time, so we can set them when you want to, I think. Well, I was going over to the EOB to right? do some work. And I... Well, we can bring them to the EOB. Uh, sure. Three o'clock, yeah. Fine. Okay. Fine. That's right. different for them. Okay. Um,
else new? No. August is really a dull month. Yeah, it is. I was just looking at the news and everything. I saw the only you know, biggest news. Kill a at 500 <laughs> It really is. There's, there's uh, people tend to relax. Sort of do what the European countries do and just like France. The world, they, up. the world needs a day off. Okay, thank you. Hi, Henry. How'd your briefing go? Oh, uh, it's a completely different atmosphere now. Yeah, even with the intern. Oh, yeah. These are college kids, of course. Yeah. Very you were good to do it. I, I, I didn't really ask for it. They, we picked these kids, and they're not the bastards. They're not the worst bastards. Well, I just figure they can go back to their campus and say that some of the senior people talk to them. Right. But it went up very well. I called back to Brennan and gave him the message. How'd he take it? <laughs> uh, we said it for September 30th, Mr. President, because Gromyko had to go back to uh, France for that state visit they're there. September 30th for the, uh, the, uh, for the ceremony here. Right, good. But, uh, and then that'll go through regular channels. Through well, I told them that they should put it into Smith and I'll call Rogers tomorrow and tell him to work out the details with the brain. For you? That's what I see. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, we've got to get a room and so forth. Just, over just let Rogers know that we, uh, that they came in here and that I said, well, we ought to do it through the state, the Secretary of State, uh, that'll build it up you over uh, up again. Just uh, not forgotten that way. Well, you can still consider going over there. You know, you've gone over the signing ceremony yeah. before. And, and tell Bill that, that I want him and the friend and uh, for me to do it, but if he feels that I want that what you say this, look the president has mentioned this, but if you feel it would be useful for him to come, he'll he'll hold his schedule open, but we want you to make the decision once that right. Right. <laughs> right. Well you know, with the other things we got going we can give a little cheap job. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sure. Right. So make him feel better. What Henry, on the budget, I talked to Sean. Yeah. Let me tell you the line I want you to take. Right. We've got to take the line of the 79 being sort of, uh, uh, you know, we can't go above that at this point. Okay, as Joan says, look, we're doing all these other things. And then let him and Packard sort of work up the Let's not talk in terms of a tax increase the rest of not in the cards at the moment, Joe. You know, we have to be realistic. Don't you think so? I think now, that's right. At an appropriate time, I will move further. But I think at the meeting tomorrow, uh, uh, Friday, let's be very, very, uh, that we don't connect. We just say that, well. But you don't have to. I wouldn't announce the figure at the meeting. No. But because the Joint Chiefs won't be there. We just go over the whole thing. But it seems to me that you and uh, 
you and Shulk and Packard work the thing out without letter. Fair enough. Right. right, Mr. President. Good. I'm having breakfast with Shulk tomorrow. Well, fine. You get his feeling. And you tell him you're good. I told Shulk today that I said, look, the national security is going to require upping this defense budget. He said, well, how can you up the defense budget? He said, it's as I agree, but he said, stick with the Navy. But he said, how can you do it when you're having success in Berlin? success with the Chinese and all the rest. I said, right, you're right about that. But, I said, on the other hand, and Schultz said, the reason you're having success is because you're being strong. Exactly. And, and he said, on the other hand, right now, you can't appear that just as you're having success, you've got to increase the budget, increase taxes. See my point? Yeah. And I think he's right about that. Right, except that what got us to this point was, you know, strength last year. I know, I know, I know. But I mean, at this point, get to this town, then to increase taxes, say we're going to have more defense. Well, let me work it out with Coke, please. We will come yeah. up with something that will not require an increase in taxes. Do the best you can. Right. Okay. Right, Mr. Fine, Henry. Bye. Bye. Woods, please. Yes, Mr. George Schultz. Hello? Mr. George Schultz returns your call, Mr. President. Yeah, I'll take it now. Hi. Hello? Yes, sir. George? Yeah. I just talked to Henry and I uh, just told him that you and he and Packard should really work on the defense budget thing. So in the morning he'll be prepared to talk to you about these things. He realizes what the problems are. And so, And you, of course, realize the national security problem involved in terms of we couldn't have gotten where we are without a strong position. And we're not going to get anywhere else. But so. So he knows, you know, so you can talk very frankly with him and work out whatever you can, okay? okay. Fine. Second thing, I think that uh, on the other matter that uh, that you must bring Ehrlichman into the game. Now, what I want you to do tomorrow, you talk to Ehrlichman and just say, no, I don't want you to go further than that. I want you to go to... Uh, the, the, the broader group of Peterson planning and it all. You see what I mean? I haven't but, talked to Bob Holloman either. Bob, don't worry about, forget Holloman because he doesn't need to know. But uh, I'll tell him when I need it, when he, let me handle him. But but you you tell Eric that what we have in mind and that it's on a, and as a lawyer, he understands the necessity for confidentiality. Yeah, but, sure. but not beyond that, see? Okay, so. come up earlier in the little meeting with Bob and John. Right, I know that, I know that. But that's the way to do it. You take uh, you take Ehrlichman into your confidence. Don't go to Peterson at this point. I'll bring him in at a proper time, but that's the way it is. And then you can talk to Connolly, if you will, at the proper time. Ron Ziegler keeps me what's going on, what's going on, and I... Don't tell him. Well, what, or do you think you should? No. No. Uh, well, he, he uh, always says that he needs to be informed of it. No, 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 no. He must not be informed about what we're going to do. We don't. We can talk about China or anything else. On this, with Ron, I'll handle Ron. Let me handle him. Don't worry about that. What I've done is, if you don't say, well, okay, I see I'm not getting any information from you, but will you tell me what it means if this happens or that happens? So I try to yeah. Right. That's right. Educate him, but don't tell him what, what the game plan is, because it's good for him not to know so that he can be very honest with the press when he doesn't know, you see? And I'll handle it. Ron, Ron's a good soldier. He knows what to do. We'll handle this probably when we get these bastards with it. Good. Okay, George. Okay, then. Fine. Hello? Rose? Yes, sir. They find out where my notes were? Oh, yes. They found out he didn't have anything. He didn't? No, and he's, um, He's sort of a kook, but you know what? He's a grade 14 with the international with the Internal Revenue Service. Okay, and apparently, um, Arthur Godfrey called me and said, apparently he's sort of a, now he takes on anyone, you know, any name or something. He's all, I guess his boss or something. Sounds to me like they ought to check him. Yeah. But I, you know, I, I, I knew Rose that there was nothing to it because, you know, it's, uh, the reason I knew is that I have a very, I have a little procedure I follow on there, on, on the plane. I change coats. I take everything out of my pocket, put it in the briefcase, put it in the schedule, and go with that alone, because 
I know this could happen, you know? Sure. And so I know he didn't have any, but I just thought maybe I made a I mistake. I thought maybe but. he had gotten, a, you know, like a schedule card and was just trying to make it in something, but he didn't have any. Huh. So, <laughs> takes all kinds. Right. Really fun. But. Okay.
Governor Bacon? Yeah. Th- thanks, sir. Hello? Mr. Bassett, this is Governor Bacon's online. Hello? Hello? Ron? Yes, how are you? I'm going to be in California toward the uh, end of next week. I'm going out to, uh, you know, I'm going to stop by uh, uh, the, the, the BFW in uh, Dallas, uh, the, you know, the Illinois State Fair. Well, I remember that Reagan was from Illinois and all that. But in any event, when we're out there, I hope we get a chance to get together. Will you be in California the last two weeks of August or not? There's more going on than meets the eye, let me tell you, on other fronts, I won't tell you, but and I, we should do it over the phone, but I want you, when you come down to dinner, I want Henry to tell you, let you in on some of the things that are going on that we can't say publicly. They're very important and very hopeful, Ron, very hopeful. I just, I won't leave it, I won't say any more on that, because you obviously know what we what's going on, but you see what I mean? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Are you at home?
How have you been? Everything I'm fine? Just fine, yeah. There was some rumor that you were going up to, to uh, that thing in Lowell Fallon. I could no. I'm going to be in. Uh, I have to go. I have to go out and trip across the country tomorrow. Uh, Are you really? Next week, I'm going to. Uh, I'll be in New York Tuesday for the Knights of Columbus. The first time a president ever spoke to them. That's right. And then on to Illinois for the Illinois State Fair, and on to uh, let's see, uh, Jackson Hole, and then oh, really? yeah. then to Dallas for the VFW, and then on to California. Oh, that's great. So. Yeah. Look, the main thing is that the only the only thing the only thing people are concerned about is the economy. But don't worry about it. It's going to come back. Sure it will. And uh, well, not only it, it is back. It's just a question of this. You know, the people getting a little frightened about this or that. Well, the indicators are going to be better. Well, they they aren't seeing the big play. The sensible conservatives see it, but they. No, well, we're trying, he's been out of the country. Henry's going to have a talk with him, I think, Thursday of this week, or tomorrow, Friday. He's going to try, right? He'll, he'll do some good. A fine man, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, I know, this book, yeah. Good, good. Right. Good, 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 good. Well, after we've, uh, we'll have a chance to have a talk, perhaps after, uh, after Labor Day, and get to see what's going on. But uh, you can be sure that there's a lot more going on than meets the eye at the moment. Well, there always is. I just marvel at it. Yeah. Okay, Hope. I give my best to the Admiral. Thank you very much. Be back home.
besser. Like, I'd like to him to give you a, 
when we're in Chicago, a little private briefing on this thing. Would you like to have that? I wonder if I'd appreciate it if you got a great man with you. Right. Great. Good. Fine. Okay, Mr. Mayor. Good luck. Bye. Secretary Connolly, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Hello. Secretary John Connolly, sir. Yeah. Hello. Mr. President? Hi, John. How are you, sir? I understand you feel you better come back. Yes, sir, I think I am. Yeah. I'm going to come back I'm gonna right. here at noon. All right. I'll be in Washington about 4.30, I imagine. Uh, Fine. Park, Washington time. Fine. Well, when you when you get in, I'll uh, I'll still be in the office, so uh, you might just drop by here if you could. All right, sir. And right, uh, sir. and uh, we we'll can. Uh, in the meantime, I'll uh, I'll uh, take a look at some uh, stuff here. I'll uh, All right. clear my afternoon and do a little studying. And Paul uh, Booker okay. is across the street. Has, right. has all the information. Uh, we expect a bad day tomorrow. They got a big Catholic holiday over there uh, over the weekend. Mm -hmm. And uh, today is going to be a fairly bad day. Yesterday was not not uh, disastrously so, but uh, we we constantly are losing the initiative. I'm afraid, mm -hmm. and I don't. Uh, I I'll fill you in on all the details, but uh, let me ask you for any details that you might want. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Let me ask you in terms of the of what we do here. If uh, the uh, uh, just just in terms of. Uh, of whether uh, of the timing, I mean, if uh, your thought is to uh, is to would be to consider at least uh, moving on one apart from the other. No, we could. My my thought, the least we could do is maybe move on the international front. Uh, yeah. Uh, this afternoon when we get in, uh, or early in the morning, mm -hmm. uh, just close the window. Mm -hmm. Uh. We wouldn't have to move on the domestic front until, say, Monday, uh, which would give you all weekend to uh, mm -hmm. give us the weekend to firm up the, you know, the details, resolve any questions, get the text prepared, and so forth. Uh, that would uh, the thing that worries me is that I don't want I don't want to leave the appearance that we've that we've reacted in haste or that we were unprepared. Mm -hmm. Now I think we can separate any action, we can move on the domestic front or we can put out an announcement to this afternoon late that, you know, that you're going to have some major changes or kind of leak it to, within the next two weeks. Uh, this might quiet things down. Uh, it seems to me there are three actions that we can take. Number one, that. Put out, it won't be an announcement per se, but it'll be a little more than a leak that, uh, that uh, some major, uh, major changes, major plans are uh, under consideration and substantially finalized uh, mm -hmm. by you. This may quiet things down. Uh, that's one action. Second, yeah, in other words, that that might buy us the time to do it then on on September seventh. The could. whole deal. It, it might. Could. It. I, I frankly doubt it, but that's a gamble. That's right. one thing we could do. It's one possibility. Yes. Okay. The second possibility is that uh, we could move on the domestic front. Just, uh, but uh, I don't. I don't. That doesn't appeal to me, but uh, if we moved on the domestic front with the domestic issues, uh, we wouldn't have to move on the international things. I think the move on the domestic issues would settle the, the international thing down, but it doesn't solve anything, really, uh, in the long run. The third uh, step that we... Well, they, uh, just considering that for a moment, you could move on the domestic front, and uh, I mean, I suppose in one way you could put it, you could move on the domestic front, and then... Uh, it, of course, it doesn't solve anything, but then the international thing would be, uh, then, uh... Well, it ought to be stabilized. It ought, it ought to be made up. It would stabilize, but then, then you, then you have a negotiating position for, for negotiating on the international front. That would be one way to look at it, wouldn't That's it? That's correct. That is, let's suppose, for example, that we announced that we were going to have a wage price freeze, that we are going to have a, right. the investment tax credit and, uh, right. and the, the other things. Right. Or as a matter of fact, you could just announce the wage price freeze alone. Right. That's one way you could do it, yeah. without going into the others. Right. And uh, as a, let me say that on that, uh, some, so you can be thinking about the plane, I talked to Schultz, and, uh, and he thinks that there is a possibility that we can get a legal opinion to the effect that that, that can be done without congressional uh, approval. 
That's my view. It may raise a legal problem, but my view is that we ought to just do it because right. if we have to wait for congressional approval, it could, it, it, they could screw it up to a fairly well. No question. See, they would put in exceptions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, I think you so, have to do it. Right. Just assume it. Uh, now, on the wage price thing, you could do it. Well, the wage price thing certainly is going to be done without congressional approval. With that, we do it now. So we announce that. You could announce that alone. Another thing you could do is to announce the wage price thing plus the import tax alone. Right. Now those two, uh, and then, uh, now the import tax, and this is, I, I, I was talking about the wrong subject. It, of course, the wage price can be done alone without right. congressional proof. Right. But the import tax, according to George, if it is one that applies to those things that were involved in the Kennedy round, and of course, that's what we would want it to apply to rather than to... And